you are invited to listen to another chapter of the dramatized story, The Life of Christ. Brought to you transcribed each week by the Graymore Friars, who offer this series with a prayerful hope that this vivid portrayal of the life of Christ will help awaken in you a deeper personal love of God and a firm determination to strive to prove that love in your daily life. Now, chapter 43. He is risen. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Dost thou believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God who hast come into the world. Now Jesus had been laid in the tomb on Friday, shortly before the feast of the Passover began. And the chief priests and the rulers came to Pilate and persuaded him that the tomb be guarded, lest his disciples steal the body and say that he was risen from the dead. And the sepulcher was sealed. And people went to their homes to celebrate the Passover and to observe the Sabbath. And the soldiers remained on watch until an early hour on Sunday, at which time there was a disturbance in the bowels of the earth. Captain, help! I can't stand! What do you want? What is it? Lie down! Hug the earth! No! Let's run from here! Lie down! Look! The two stones rolled away! Who, who is that sitting there? Who? Who goes? It is a ghost! Run! Run for your lives! Come back! Come back! Captain, this is a strange tale you bring us. It is the truth. Perhaps you and your men have been drinking and you make this up to protect yourselves. No soldier could make up such an excuse. You've not reported this to Pilate? Knowing the Sanhedrin's great interest in the tomb, we have come direct to you. The tomb is empty? Yes. How could you tell in the dark? The man sitting on the stone lighted up the tomb. I could see within. It was empty. You realize this is a very serious matter? That's why we reported to you first. It was you that asked Pilate for the watch. Desertion from a watch carries a heavy penalty, does it not? The penalty is severe, yes. However, there seemed to be no point in guarding an empty tomb. Of course, it was the disciples who took the body. My men and I think differently. We will swear to it. How do you account for it? If questioned by Pilate, you will have to report just what I've told you. Perhaps the man spoke the truth. I told you at the time he seemed not a boastful man. If, as you accuse him, he be the son of God, he would have no trouble pushing aside the stone from within. We do not accuse him of being, but of claiming to be the son of God. But that does not concern you. If there's nothing further, I'll now report to Pilate. No, 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 don't go yet. 
Sit down, Captain. I'm wondering if we could not arrive at some uh, understanding. Of course, you know Pilate will not believe this preposterous story. But there are certain quarters where it will be believed. It would be most unfortunate if your story was noised about. Yes, there are many foolish people who would believe it, and it would cause no end of speculation and rumor. I can well understand. Would it not be best to say uh, his disciples came by night and stole him while we were sleeping? Sleeping on watch like desertion is a serious matter. Of course. But suppose you were rewarded for your slumber. Well, it could serve the sting of Pilate's displeasure. And if the procurator hears of this, we will persuade him to keep you out of trouble. Uh, I, uh, I'll have to talk this over with my men. You can persuade them? Perhaps. How many are there in the watch? Four. Perhaps a gift would be useful. If it be in proportion to the risk. I think you will find the gifts contained in these bags quite in proportion. <laughs> yes, quite. Then it's a bargain. Your men will say the body was stolen while the watch slept, and by his disciples. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Now the women, who had prepared spices and ointment on the day of the burial, came early on the first day of the week. And there were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome, and Joanna. And as they hurried toward the tomb, Mary Magdalene said, Who will roll the stone back from the entrance of the tomb for us? stone has been rolled away. Mary, Joanna, the tomb is empty. I will run and tell Peter and the others. Who's that? Do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was yet in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day, rise. And the women fled the tomb in terror and followed after Mary Magdalene, who ran to Simon Peter. Peter! Peter! Mary, what is it? You must come at once. The tomb. The tomb? What has happened? Gone. Gone. Jesus is gone. What? I just came from there. The stone had been rolled away and the tomb is empty. They have taken the Lord from the tomb and, and, and we do not know where they have laid him. No, no. John! John, come! Hurry! To the tomb! The other women and I came early with spices and ointment. The guards were gone, and the stone was as you see it. I looked in. He was gone, and I ran to you after telling the women. Where are they now? I don't know. I left them here. Let's go in. Not a trace of him. Wait. Come here. Look. The linen in which he was wrapped. The napkin that covered his face. The napkin is neatly folded. There is no doubt the body has not been stolen. Oh. 
Why would they unwind the linen and fold the napkin if they wanted to steal the body? But where is he? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Come, John, we must go to the others and tell them what we've seen. <laughs> Woman. Woman, why art thou weeping? Because they have taken away my lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Woman, why art thou weeping? Whom dost thou seek? Art thou the gardener? Oh, sir, if thou hast removed him, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Mary. Rabboni. Master. Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Yea, Lord. He is risen. What? Mary, what are you saying? I have seen the Lord, and these he said to me. I have not yet ascended to my father. Go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Incredible. She's overwrought. I can't This it. tale is that of the women who said they saw angels sitting at the tomb. Seems to be nonsense. Peter, Peter, how can you say that? I threw myself at his feet. I, I touched him. And he said, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Mary. This has upset you and the other women. You had best go home and say no more about this. It will get you into trouble with the rulers. Peter, Peter, it... all of you. How can I make you believe? He has risen. But this tale seemed to them to be nonsense, and they did not believe the woman. And now that same day after the Passover, many people were leaving the city for their homes. And among these were two of Jesus' followers, one of whom was named Cleophas, who were walking toward the village of Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked, they talked sadly about the things that had happened. What could have happened to the body of Jesus? We know Joseph had Pilate's permission to place it in the tomb and did so. Surely the chief priests would not have stolen it themselves after sealing the tomb and placing guards. This they did, it's rumored, because they feared the disciples would steal the body and tell all the people that Jesus had risen from the dead. I did not go to the execution place. I... Who is this who follows us? Greetings, stranger. Greeting. What words are these that you two are exchanging as you walk and are sad? Art thou the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have happened there in these days? What things? Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in work and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who should redeem Israel. Yes. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things have come to pass. And moreover, certain women of our company who were at the tomb before it was light astounded us, and not finding his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he is alive. So... Some of our company went to the tomb and found it even as the women had said. But him, they did not see. 
How is it you are not aware of these things? Oh, foolish ones. And slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. What of the prophets? Did not Christ have to suffer these things before entering into his glory? What? Suffer as he did? They beat him. They spat upon him. They mocked him. And then they scourged him and taunted him the more before nailing him to the cross. Moses and all the prophets have written of these things. And they cried out even as he was dying. If thou art the Son of God, save thyself. And the chief priests, the soldiers, and many of the people cried out, saying in effect, if thou art the Christ, why art thou now nailed to a cross? Why, why doesn't God save thee if thou art his son? Haley, Haley, Lema Sabachthani. All they that saw me have laughed me to scorn. They've spoken with the lips and wagged the head. He hoped in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him save him, seeing he delighteth in him. They have dug my hands and feet. They have numbered all my bones. They have looked and stared upon me. And seeing me, they parted my garments amongst them. And upon my vesture, they cast lots. And beginning then with Moses and with all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things referring to himself. As it was written, so it came to pass. And they crucified two robbers with him that the scripture might be fulfilled. And he was reckoned among the wicked, and he was the first of the three to die, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall you break. And a lance was thrust into his side, that they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And thus the scripture be fulfilled. Who... Oh. Who art thou that you should know these things? Oh, I have read the prophets with blinded eyes, but now so much is clear. But now it's getting dark. Stay with us. Let us have supper, Timaeus. And the stranger walked with them to the village. And it came to pass, when he reclined with them, that he took the bread and blessed it. He broke it, and he gave it to them. I... I recognize thee. Thou art the Christ. Thou art... Is gone. Vanished. Ah. Was not our heart burning within us while he was speaking on the road and explaining to us the scriptures? And they, who were slow of heart, to believe in all the prophets had spoken, rose up that very hour and hastened back to Jerusalem, that they might tell the others of all these things they had heard and witnessed. Not 
a sound. I'll see who it is. Who comes? Leo, sir. We hide here and bar the door for fear of the rulers. We've just come from the mayor's, Peter. A most miraculous thing has happened. A great thing has happened here. Simon has seen him. What? Here too? The Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. We too have seen him. Where? What? Where? We were on our way to Emmaus. He came to us as a stranger and explained all the scripture to us. And we did not know him. But our hearts burned for the telling of it. And then we sat. And we recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And did he speak to you? No. The moment we recognized him, he disappeared. Oh. Peace to you. It is I. Do not be afraid. It is a spirit. Why are you disturbed? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Which I oh. see my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Feel me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bone, as you see I have. It is true. It is true. Have you anything here to eat? Here. It's broiled fish and honeycomb. And he took the fish and honeycomb and ate it in their presence. And that which remained, he gave to them. And he opened their minds and spoke to them. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you. That all things might be fulfilled that are written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Thus it is written, and thus the Christ should suffer, and should rise again from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you yourselves are witnesses to these things, and I send forth upon you the promise of my Father wait here in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Dost thou believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. 